All right, so this is part two of our final review. Uh, this is the Microsoft SQL Server part. I'm not even going to cover access because I removed all the questions from the final having to do with access. So remember, Microsoft SQL Server is not a database. It's a relational database management system, an RDBMS, just like Oracle, Teradata, MySQL, or the ones you hear out there. Uh, SQL is structured query language. It's a programming language designed to work with relational databases. It is not limited to Microsoft SQL Server. It's used by many other systems as well, Oracle, Teradata, MySQL, SQLite. It's, and it's always, there's always little tweaks that are a little different. The, the, the technical name for the Microsoft SQL Server language is actually called T-SQL or Transactional SQL. So that's what you've learned in class is T-SQL. But, you know, if, if you just look it up, you can go to Google and find if you need to know how to do something in a, in a different language, it's all there. Okay, the select statement. Uh, the select statement from the database, the data you want to see. So you look at a table here. We'll select the columns we want to see from the table. And we have the from command below here. These are the two things you need a basic select statement. A from, which tells you the table we're reaching from, and then select tells you what columns we want. Okay. If we want to do a select statement where we just want all, all the columns, then we have our select wildcard, which is the asterisk. We select star from table, it gives everything. Alias, uh, if you have sometimes names in a database aren't very clear. So I have this imp in M. Maybe somebody doesn't know what that means. It, what it means is employee name. So I can just put the as and put employee name after. and that will change the way it appears on the output. It will not change the table, just the output. Remember, aliases only change the output. They do not change the actual table. The where clause is, allows you to apply filters to a table. Uh, you can do a where clause where age is, so I can sit there, I add it. The where clause comes after from, comes after your from statement, I say where, and I pick a column, age is greater than 40, or I can say higher dates greater than, or I can here, I can say higher date is between these two dates. Uh, that's your basic where clause. Just remember, if you're dealing with strings or dates, you got to put you got to put single quotes up. If you're dealing with uh, numbers, you don't. And then I'm going to add a new slide here, just on the fly here. And this is going to be could be a text box here. Make sure it's big enough to see. And we're going to do a quick thing. We're going to remember. Okay, so. If I have age is equal to 40, that's good. You know, that can be my where statement, where age is equal to 40. Now, I can also say greater than, less than, you know, greater than, less than. And if I don't want it to be there, I can say is not equal to or this is also not equal to. Okay. So that's when I have like a number and that could be a number or it could be a name. You know, I could say, you know, name is equal to and we should put percent. If I want to find all the names that start with B, what I would do there is instead of the equal sign, I'll use like, and I'll put in percent, and I have B, and I put this afterwards, okay? The percentage sign is multiple. If I just wanted the ones that start with B and end with B and have one letter in the middle like Bob, I can put a question mark in there. So remember... So remember, the asterisk is the wild card for select, but for where it is, you've got single letter is the question mark and percentage sign is the main wild card, okay? Got that. And if we don't, if we have a, if we don't want the ones that start with B, we can use not like. So that would be another way. So you could sit there and say, where name is not like. Okay, that we can also have where with nulls, where name is null, we'd want to have, we actually use the word is null, okay? You can't have equal to, not that, and if you want, is not null, okay? And the last one, we're going to have a list of things here, you could say where name, you know, we could say or age is in, and we have a list of, let's say, 40, 35, 50. And it would anybody that's 40, 35, or 50 would pop up on that list, okay? So there you go. So that's just a quick review. Remember that. Remember the likes, 
the end and it is not or is for, for null and equal and all the things for regular stuff. Okay. Order by, order by basically is your sort, tells you how to sort, which column you want to sort by. And by default, it is ascending, which is BASC, which means it starts at the lowest and goes up the highest. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. If you want to start high and go low, you could type in the word DESC behind it and it would descend. As you see here, the H's are descending. Okay. Joins. Joins are how we can bind tables from the foreign key to the main key. There's four types of joins we went over in this class. The syntax for a join is from table, join the next table on, and then what the two the columns you're joining on, which will normally be a, a, a foreign key and a primary key. Uh, you don't have to alias them, but I do because it makes more sense. And remember, join is inner join. That's the default. And the default inner join, what it does is we'll only bring back things that are in both tables. So notice only the ones that come back here is the A and the C because A and C are found in the ID column of both table A and B. A full outer join which you'd actually type in full out or join down here, that brings back everything. So you get everything from this table plus the E and the F from this table, and you just get nulls where there's nothing to join them against. Then you have a left outer and a right outer join, and these two work based on the order of the table. So you notice I start with table A here. From table A, left outer join to table B. It's gonna bring everything in from table A and, and only things that match from table B. If I do a right outer, it does the opposite, everything from table B and only stuff that matches from table A. Now, yes, I could turn, I could keep it as a left outer and just switch the order of the tables and it would be the same thing. Okay. Remember some aggregates, top return, this returns whatever number you put in. So if I put select top 10 from table, I'm going to get 10 rows. If I select top five, I'll get five rows back. Count literally counts. The rows. That's all you're going to get. You're not going to get any data back, just the count. So if I say select count from table, it tells me I've at 100. That means I have 100 records in that table. Distinct returns the number of unique elements. So if I was looking at payment here, which I have cash, check, and credit card, and I said select distinct payment from this table, it's going to return three rows. Cash, check, credit card. The syntax, you usually place the column you're interested in inside the parentheses. Okay. You got min and max. They'll return the minimum price and the maximum price. Average and sum turns the the, the mean and the sum of a column you put in there. Uh, and just remember, if you're using aggregates here, and you have nothing but aggregates in your select, you're fine. But the second you add other things, you're going to have to group by. So if I wanted to count of only the orders in the tool department, what's the max price in all the credit card orders, these kind of things I'll do with group by. So I'd sit there and I'd say the rule of thumb is that any column that's not part of the aggregate function, and you'll know it's not an aggregate because it doesn't have parentheses on it, all your ags have these parentheses, let you know you're dealing with an aggregate, has to go in the group by. So if I select department and count from customers, I'll group by department and I get a list of all my departments. Notice it's, it's a single distinct list and the count of orders in that department or records reference in that department okay same thing here i can have more than one i have department and payment max price from customer orders and i'll see that i have to group by now department and payment because i have two non-aggregates now if i had 50 aggregates after that i don't have to group those they'll keep coming i'll just have more columns but as you'll see now i have distinct for each department and payment type and then what the max payment was Having, we use along with this, having is used uh, basically as a filter. It's the where clause for when you're dealing with aggregates. So the having, you'll notice, again, it comes after the group by having a count greater than 20. But you notice I still have to put the aggregate in there. So I had a sum of prices. I would still have to write some price down here too as well. That's how, but that's how having works. When I want to filter on the aggregate, that's where having comes in handy, you know. And you can have both. I have a where, see here, I have a where clause having, but notice the order. I select from where, group by, having. Yeah. Remember, SQL consists of 
the following five sublanguages, DQL, DML, DCL, TCL, DDL, and DCL. You're only going to have to worry about these two on your test. Well, this is the one you're mostly using is the DQL for the search, but in questions, it's going to be these two. Remember, DDL is your objects. This is what builds your tables, views, that kind of thing. DML is data manipulation. That moves your data around. So again, DQL, most commonly used. This is our select statements from where DML, data manipulation language. This is our inserts, our, co our, our deletes. This is our, you know, puts data in, moves it around, the manipulation of the data. Control. This, we didn't really go over in class because we don't have rights, but this is our security issue. You can grant and revoke rights of people to see parts of the database. I lost part of my thing here. Hold on. Okay, so we also have transact control language. This is our commit and rollback we did. So this allows you to, you know, undo your screw ups. Then data definition language. And this is your create, your alter, your drop. Again, this builds your objects like your views, your stored procedures, your tables. Okay. Remember, primary keys. By simply adding the word primary key to a, when you're building your table, that puts makes it a primary key. Remember, primary keys cannot tain duplicates or null values. The identity column, it's our auto count. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about that in the test. Don't worry about it. Alter table, we use this to make changes to a table after it's been made. So you can add uh, a column and you can alter the column. Inserting data, just we add this code, you know, Remember that if the code looks like foreign keys, you know, we move the foreign keys, use the alter command. Drop. Remember, drop applies to tables and objects. You drop, you completely not only delete the data, but you get rid of the table as well. Delete and truncate. Truncate will get rid of all the data on the table, but the table will still stand. Delete allows you to have a filter. So you can say delete where... You need that there where the student name is Scooby, okay? Rollback. Remember, rollback allows you to undo your script. So you always start with begin transaction, delete table A. Rollback, make mistake table, it'll be back. Commit if I want to keep it. Once you've committed, you can no longer roll back. Update. This is how we update data. Its syntax is update table, set a column to a value you want, where the column value is something else, okay? Finally, views are stored queries okay so all you do is you take a query you want wrap it in this term of create view give it a name as put it in parentheses just remember all columns in a table have to have a unique name and have to be named that is an alias if you're using some kind of aggregate in there all right well thank you very much hopefully this review helps and i will see you guys at the test on the 20th